Okay. First things first. First, I have to define uh, for you uh, what securitization is, and I'm going to apologize right away to my students. I know you've seen this way, way too many times with me, but uh, here it comes again. If you haven't seen this before, the first time it's pretty good. Uh, so here we go. This is my securitization uh, primer. So you can think of securitization of consi of, uh, as consisting of two steps. In the pooling step, an investment bank is going to buy, to buy a bunch of uh, debt claims, so mortgages, if you will, and it's going to pool them uh, in a big basket uh, of uh, assets. And then in the trenching step, the investment bank is going to use that basket as collateral for the creation of a bunch of different securities. So that's pooling and trenching. So now in a bit more uh, details. This is how it works. In the pooling step, as I said, the investment bank is going to go out and buy a bunch of mortgages from uh, originators out there. And then it's going to place those mortgages in a corporation which is typically structured as uh, what we call a special purpose vehicle or uh, SPV. The point of that corporation is going to be, I mean, the goal of that corporation is going to be one. It's going to be to distribute uh, the cash flows that are associated with those mortgages to a bunch of securities. So that's the pooling step. Very easy. We create a little corporation with every asset uh, mortgages. And then we have the trenching step. So in the trenching step, as I said, what you're going to do is you're going to use uh, those mortgages as collateral for a bunch of securities, securities that are known as CMOs, or collateralized mortgage obligations. So those are bonds that are collateralized by a bunch of mortgages, as uh, shown here. And those CMOs are going to be ordered in terms of seniority. So at the top of uh, the menu, we're going to get a trench or a bunch of trenches, uh, or a few trenches, I should say, that are going to get paid first. Because they get paid first, always, they're also the safest securities. And in fact, they may be so safe that the rating agencies may estimate that they are nearly as safe as a treasury. So the rating agency may decide to give those trenches the highest possible uh, credit quality rating, which is AAA. And then uh, uh, next we have other trenches which uh, are slightly junior to the top trenches. So those are not nearly as safe because uh, they only get paid second, not first. But the rating agency may still estimate that they are reasonably likely to pay. So they may get a median quality rating, credit quality rating of uh, double. And then of course as we work our way down the menu of securities, we start running into securities that are riskier and riskier because a lot of securities have to be paid before they themselves get paid. And here the rating agency may say, well, those are quite risky. And I'm going to give them a low credit quality rating of, say, B. And then at the very end, always dangling at the bottom of the CMO structure is a residual trench. And that trench is always going to get anything coming from the mortgages minus what has already been promised to all the other CMOs. So this is the uh, equity trench. So what you can see right away is that an investment bank has quite a bit of freedom as to what securities it creates. So if you will, it has a lot of freedom as to how it chooses to split the cash flows that are coming from the mortgages. So a big question that you have to take on if you're going to think about securitization like Dean and I uh, have, is you have to decide how is an investment bank going to choose what menu of securities <coughs> sorry, to uh, issue against a bunch of uh, mortgages. So that sounds very complicated, but it turns out to be very easy. All you have to do is you have to understand where securitization profits comes from. The profits that an investment bank is going to get from a securitization deal can be very simply stated as the market value of the securities it has created minus the cost of funding the mortgages, the collateral, if you want, for those securities, and minus any transaction cost associated with floating the securities that you are uh, creating. That's it. So once you recognize that, the thinking becomes very easy. How is the investment bank going to maximize profits? Well, first, it is going to sell each security to the highest bidder for that particular type of security. That is going to be step number one. So the investment bank is going to call around all its friends, hedge funds, pension funds, what have you, insurance companies, and it's going to ask, how much are you willing to pay for this or that? And it's always going to sell each security to the highest bidder. That's step number one. And step number two, it is just going to create the feasible menu of securities which happens to have the highest uh, total market value given what market conditions are at a particular point in time. Out of this you get really the main idea I'm going to use throughout my talk uh, today. And the idea is this. A particular pool is going to, securitization pool, is going to get created 
if and only if it is possible to find a menu of securities that you can create with that pool whose market value exceeds our securitization costs. Right? It's as simple as this. You do a securitization deal if and only if you can make those profits positive. So let's imagine now that for some reason market conditions change. So the idea I'm going to push hard today is let's imagine that the value of AAA goes up. When the value of AAA goes up, what happens is that there are pools that were not profitable before that now become profitable. So the scope and the nature of securitization is going to change. And this is what's going to drive my entire uh, uh, dissertation today. Um, okay, so since AAA is going to be at the center of my argument, it's important that I answer a question that may be on your mind if you haven't seen before, which is how can I possibly take assets that are very risky, mortgages, and how can I extract at least a little bit of AAA uh, from those assets? So in order to understand this, all you have to do is look at a very simple example. So here I'm imagining that some investment bank has put together a pool of uh, mortgages. And I'm assuming that, uh, I mean, I'm also imagining that if everything goes well, the pool is going to generate $3 million in cash flows. That's if all goes well. Uh, then if the pool performs decently, you're going to get $2 million out of that particular pool. And then if things turn out to be bad, if a lot of your mortgages turn out to default, then you're only going to get $1 million out of your pool of mortgages. Okay. So now here comes the question. How much AAA can I possibly extract, or how can I possibly extract any AAA for that matter from a risky pool like this? Well, all you have to do is make sure that your AAA is not promising anything above a $1 million. Right? Because you know that you can deliver a $1 million no matter what. As long as you do not promise more than a million dollars, then you can safely make that promise. So this means that the most AAA that you can extract from this particular pool is a AAA security that is going to promise one million dollars at the most. If you were anywhere above that, then you would be creating a risky security. Okay, so that's how you get AAA uh, out of a pool of mortgages. You just extract the safe part of the cash flows coming from the pool. This is what just happened here. And then you have to decide what to do with the rest of the cash flows. So here the investment bank may choose to create a bond, which is going to pay a million dollars as long as things don't turn out to be bad. Right? This is the B tranche here. And then finally, like I said, always dangling at the bottom is going to be an equity tranche, which is going to mop up any residual cash flows. And in this case, it's going to pay one million dollars if and only if everything goes according to the plan. Uh, okay. So here's one very important remark. Once you get the, this very simple algebra here, you also understand immediately that it's all about the worst case scenario. So if I am the rating agency and I have to decide how much uh, AAA I'm gonna, am I going to let this particular investment bank extract from that particular pool, I don't need to worry about the ent entire distribution of cash flows coming from the mortgages. Right? The forecasting exercise is much, much simpler than this. All I have to do is forecast how bad it could get. What is the worst case scenario? Once I get the worst case scenario right, then I'm going, to, I'm going to get my rating right. And conversely, if I get the worst case scenario wrong, and if I let this investment bank promise more than $1 million, then I will have made a mistake, and things will go wrong, which is what we talk about when we talk about the form of securitization. But speaking of things that, were, uh, that went very, very wrong uh, during the crisis, I have to tell you a little bit about CDOs and uh, CDO squares. So what are those? Um, so in order to understand those, what you have to do is you have to put yourself in the shoes of some investment bank, say JP Morgan. At any particular point in time, you are putting together a bunch of securitization deals. So say here I'm imagining schematically those three secu secu securitization deals sitting on your table. So what you discover as JP Morgan is that it's very easy to sell AAA, AA, anything that's investment grade. Very, very, very easy. Right? The markets are deep, the price is right, no problem. What is much more difficult is to sell a B-rated CMO. Because even some hedge fund out there is going to recognize that those are some very, very risky uh, deals that you're buying when you buy a straight B CMO from a mortgage securitization deal. So what is an investment bank to do? So what they did is they came up with the following beautiful idea, which is let's create another special purpose vehicle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all my B tranches that are coming from all my securitization deals, and then I'm going to put them together in a new special purpose uh, vehicle. And here my argument is going to be, sure, each and every one of those pieces is very, very risky. 
But when you put them together out of very simple diversification arguments, hopefully you've made the worst case scenario not quite as bad as it was when you were looking at those pieces alone. And in particular, it becomes possible, again, to extract Tripoli if you want to, or a bunch of security. So I may be able to play the same game as before. Extract some Tripoli, extract some Double A, of course. Then at the very bottom, you're going to get another B trench and some equity trench that are even riskier than before, and therefore even harder to sell. So what are you going to do? So you're going to take all those new B trenches that are now backed by B-rated CMOs, and you're going to put them in another special purpose vehicle, and you get what's called CDO square. Right? The first layer is called CDO, the second layer is called CDO square, and if you like, you can go CDO cube too, just like investment banks did uh, before the crisis. So the idea here is the following. So what you do, so here I'm, again, imagining that I have two B trenches, Right, that are in and of themselves very risky. In fact, the worst case scenario on each of those B trenches is really terrible. You may get nothing out of those B trenches, but then you mix them together and you add them up and magically you've created a pool whose worst case scenario is not nearly as bad, just like before. Even in the worst case scenario, it's going to give you a million dollars. And the reason for this is diversification. Yes, those B trenches are very risky, but those risks are not perfectly correlated. Right? They perform poorly in different states of the world or so the story went before the crisis, right? And then once you've done this, it's very easy. You can play the same game as before, and on you go, and then you have to worry about that B-trench here, but you're gonna put it in a CDO square, and you're gonna raise CDO, CDO it, as they say, and off um, you go. Okay, good.